Boy Sultua. Parfait. That's right, it's a perfect start to our top quintal season here at Montpellier. Three games, three wins. We're off to a flyer. Can we keep up the momentum on the road? Now, round four clash against the Bordeaux Bengals. Bonjour, everyone, and welcome back along to the Montpellier career here on your home of rugby. And today, we hit the tracks, not for the first time this season, but possibly with our toughest road trip so far this season. We take on Bordeaux, a tough team sitting midfield along well, not alongside us, because we're up the top of the table. These guys are sitting in the middle, but it's so early season, one win it can completely twist your season on its head. We're three from three, and we can't afford a loss here now. These guys, though, are two wins and just the one loss on their record. Our team on the road, of course, on the right-hand side, has undergone a number of changes. Yet again, of course, the injury to Sanconi. Big shame to lose him, the big number eight. He departs. Geelong comes in, well, he, no, he moves, in fact, from the second row to number eight. Probably his more preferred position, but he's been fairly solid in the second row. Capelli, the superstar from season one, just 23 years old as well. He has a big future ahead of him. He comes into the starting lineup alongside Flanquart in the second row. When Jones comes back in again, we've got more room for internationals to come into the side. So when Jones comes in, we've only got four in the lineup here today. Paylag returns back to scrum half. Your partner Heron, who has made that number 10 jumper all his own. Golanitsky was pretty average last episode, so Carl and Oz comes back in to that left wing. Midfield, he's been somewhat disappointing. You've got to say, Ryle Hark hasn't stood up. We tried both the there. Dalmeru's injured. Now is the time for Vincent to come and show his wares. More preferred inside centre, so Serpentine. The more adaptable player moves out one to 13. Ratiz is still on the right wing. Of course, Boffier, after that trial of midfield, moves back to fullback and Padovani out of the 15. On the other side of the equation for Bordeaux, look out for the Argentinian connection. Santiago Cordero is electric. He is so dangerous. And we saw last time against Toulon just how dangerous a rapidly sparky player can be. She's in Colby. He tore us up more times than once. And, of course, Juan Cruz Melia, capable of fullback as well for the Pumas. But we see him here in the midfield. I'd say that is where his preferred position would be. Trunduk runs things from a 10. And it is a star-studded pack as well. Louis Pickamoles at 8. Cameron Wokey at 7. Uh, Bedwell Curtis at 6. Of course, a New Zealand player in that back row. Kane Douglas alongside James Van Rensburg in the second row. And then it's Big Ben, Tommy Afuna, and the number one jumper. And he's got a big Georgian as well. Lasha Tabadza is in the, the uh, number three jumper. That's what the teams look like. The benches, I think we're quite stacked on the bench. Skinner comes in to the 22 jumper. Padovani's there as well as Pulu. Galatea comes in to the back row cover. Shleiru moves to the second row cover. Hamadach, Setiano, and Gerardo for the front row. There's plenty of talents in this Bordeaux side as well. And before recording, I was having a look at their reserves. There's plenty of players in there as well that have missed out on selection. A couple of key players injured also in that side. But a team with Lamarat, Lamb, Yuani, Russell, Kubelas, uh, Piro, and Dweber. I mean, that's a fairly good-looking reserve bench for Bordeaux as well. Is it good enough to topple the undefeated Montpellier? Well, let's get to the action and find out. Hopefully not. Realistically, we're not going to win every game this season, are we? But we can dream that we can. Budo in the red. We're in the blue. Let's go. Round four of the top quartiles is underway. And an early takedown from Wade Drago. He's lost that straight away. That's a terrible start. And Carlin Isles has caught into action very early. Boffier has got work to do on the fence. And we managed to shut that down just in the nick of time. Santiago Cordero, I told you, I told you he's the one to watch. And it was his wing they went to instantly out on this right-hand side on attack. Frank Park pulls it down. Paylard gives to Heron. There's a bit of space in here on the left-hand side. Not the best covering at the back there for Bordeaux. And they eventually drag it in on their 22. Oh, they're running it as well. That's a bit dangerous. Heron falls off a tackle. Going to Sally misses one as well. But it's Wynn Jones, the Welshman, who comes across 
to save an epic run from Louis Piccamoles down the right hand touchline. It was a bit too exciting for my liking, that's for sure. I like that out of our players. Not the other way around. Kamada at the back grabs it. A Pelog hits a little runner. We recycle, finally. Two phases in a row. Oh, Capelli. Now he's dangerous. Throws out the back to Vincent. Release. The forwards get there rather slowly, but they do the job. Here's Paylard drawing defenders. Bogigny away to Surfrance. Hey, beautiful ball to Ritz. Running away from his support. The there goes Morphier. Up in the line, knocks it on. Not releasing. And Kelly will yank that one from his grasp and force the referee to play that advantage and give them the short penalty. Well, this was a little bit exciting here from us. Sir Fontaine, the nice offload, and it all fell apart there when Retis tried to give the Boffier. He had to leave it behind because Crouch. he was in front of the pass. Fine. And then on the regather. Well, it Set. didn't quite go to hand. Bordeaux was a scrum feed, and you may notice in recent episodes, our scrum has been very powerful. All right, get across, Paylug. Cover those lines. Advantage. Oh, that's locked on. Isles, what are you doing? Oh, he's got it, actually. He's got it, Isles. Great work from Carl and Isles there. We've got advantage on our side. Great chance to score the opening try here. Paylug. Good as Sally gives it a bit of depth advantage as well. Over. And Fitzson goes through. Oh, no. Heron was right there. It was an easy try. And I am disgusted in Bordeaux there. Send that filthy man off. You know what? Heron says I didn't get the try before. I'm going to take it now. Poor defense from Bordeaux. You leave a massive hole like that. We're going to take it. Brent Heron scores. I probably should have scored it under the sticks. He gets a try anyway. Vincent went through. What's this? Heron was on his right shoulder. It was a try all day long. Massive gap there. Bang! Heron, look, there he is. Kamado was there as well. Reset, two players standing on each other, chatting like schoolgirls in the lunch yard. And that is an easy try for our number 10, Brett Heron. Good start, Montpellier. Under the pump early on, but we've got points on the board here. And that is rather critical. Here's Heron to convert his own try in the dying lights of the evening. And he does exactly that. It's Bordeaux nil. Montpellier, seven. Well, that was a little bit of a trial there. I think we had to work hard to get out of our area. They ran it back instead of kicking inside their own half, and that cost them. And then a couple of silly plays by Bordeaux. Really did see them out of the action. Oh, that's a turnover again off the kickoff. Ratiz has to work hard. Well, they eventually go back inside, and it is Malia who takes it to ground. Quick pick up, and nothing on there at all. That's a shocking play from Bordeaux. There is another go from Pickamoles, who's been quite solid. Oh, that's a great play. Passing through the action. We slow to the breakdown here at Montpellier. Lots of numbers on that short side. They turn it back again. It's the Argentinian, Lan Cruz, Emilia. Paylark's offside. It's another big hit there. Everyone chipping in at the moment. There's now a bit of room. Again, it's Malia. Third carry in about four phases. Pick and go to the right hand side. Oh, Douglas, great little offload there, finding the hard runner. And again, Paylark's offside. Gillot makes a good tackle on his opposite back rower. Boffier, get back! Now they come out to the right hand side. And they get on the outside channels. Well, Retees. Oh, what an offload. No, it's a dummy. It's a dummy from the heavens. It's an absolute stunner. And it's a try to Bordeaux. Well, you can't defend that. Shannon Walker gets the try. And take a look at this. Brilliant work by Walker. Straight out to him. Second pass. Just got away from Retees. And then it looked like the offload, but he held on to it. He had support on the inside, but covers line back against the run of Boffier. Left him for dust. That's a great little try. Come from nothing as well. And it puts Bordeaux right back in this game. 7-5. Trantuk does not miss from there. We are all tied up here. Round four of the top quartiles. It is Bordeaux 7, Montpellier 7. Well, that kind of come from nothing, didn't it? Really, 
under the pump defensively we were in a, a moment of brilliance from Walker it puts them back in this game and speaking of moments of brilliance oh that's a big one there from Gilda Sally I was going to say the run was brilliant off flow goes backwards Maylar Kieran flank high goes nicely so from Tain oh out the back to Geelong he gets the pass off floating no he holds on Vince Song was right there Now's the chance. Oh, Baginyi. He stopped. He stopped on Isles. Oh, no. He sold it to no one. Why didn't he give it to Isles? How about that for Pickamoles again, though? Numbers on this left side. Oh, we went for a turnover there. Couldn't quite get it. Another terrible run there. I'm still a bit pegged off. Baginyi didn't give the pass away to Isles, who's still searching for his debut try in a Montpellier shirt, but wait on, we got a big bus here from Waldo, and speaking of Isles, he's in the action again, it's held up, just inside the 10 minute line, oh that was a shocker, there's no one home back here, Isles, get there, no Isles, don't go out, oh no, Carlin, what have you done, thought he would be able to pick that up easy before the sideline, but no, he's made a meal of it, an absolute shocker. Last chance before half time for Bordeaux to secure more points as let's get some numbers in there, lads. There goes the buzzer. This is the last passage of play. We've got no one out wide. Geelong's getting there. Ratiz is going to have to run. It's a sprint and it's going to be Walker again. Try number two. No. Inside to Mania. And Ratiz. Perfect defence. But the pass back to Malia, and the try has scored, Bordeaux hit two, and nothing, Bossier chasing across with the tees, could do about that one. We knew we had no one out wide, and I tried to get someone, Jalonk was the one I picked, he was never going to get there, Ratiz, oh he put the doubters in him, he really was in the mental frame there of Walker, but Walker had a plan B, and it was to go back to that man, one cruise Malia. And we've seen one Argentinian shine tonight already for Bordeaux after a startling start from the man on the right wing, Cordero, as the kick is successfully converted. It's been all the man in the 13 jumper, Malia, a try. He's been massively involved in all their hit ups. And it's a game now. Bordeaux, the home team, are leading at the break after a half where I thought maybe. We've done enough to keep in touch. 47 the halftime score. Look at that top line. Not the score, the one under it. 80% possession. Wow. You don't have the ball, you ain't gonna get injured. It seems to be that way too. No injuries yet, but we are struggling to get enough ball to actually make any plays. Budo doing very well at keeping hold of it. Not too many errors you see there. Just one by the home side. Six by us on the road though. Not the greatest effort so far at the break, but still, just one try away from tying things up. Let's get back into this game, lads. We've got plenty of options on the bench as well. So we may go there in 20 minutes or so. We'll see how we go. Ratiz waiting for him. Oh, massive tackle there. This is a great little bus straight off. Plundok now. Bordeaux looking hot straight after half time. Oh, look for that offload. Release. Didn't quite find it. We try so this really hard. Oh, we might still get it. Oh, we have. Numbers of the breakdown. Suck on that. Vincent. It's a bit disjointed here. Sofrentine. Out to Isles. Here's the speedster. Isles looking to shimmy. Isles the sideline. Oh, he's in touch. Oh, Carlin Isles. He can't buy that first try at the moment. Beat the fullback with ease as well. But just putting a foot on touch. That's turned over. Now we've got another chance. Heron. Vincent. Kamara across. So Ratiz. Ratiz. He gets it instead. And Ratiz dots down with an easy finish on the right. Turned over line out. It's the best way to absolutely bamboozle the opposition defence. They won't sit for this. They were set for their own play. And you got to distribute quickly. Heron took the line. Vincent there took the tackle. Kamada involved. Surfrontaine almost got intercepted. But great catch and distribution from the South African midfielder. And Ratiz, we know, 
He loves to score tries. Well, this game's come down to a bit of a stalemate here, isn't it? Could be 14 all if Heron hits his mark. Strong wind coming over his back. But it's not too far out. It should be an easy knock over here to make it 14 points apiece. And Heron does just that. It is all tied up. 14 all. Montpellier strike back against Bordeaux just after half time. It looked like they were going to be the ones to score. Tonduk had a good run. But errors have cost them as they go very deep here. Good, a selling. Oh, goodness me, Capelli smashed. Heron is in a, oh, he's in a lot of space here. Oh, he's in trouble. Oh, he stopped it all, but he's been hit high. Yellow card, dished out instantly. Oh, massive call from the referee. Off he goes. Wow. Heron was searching. Searching for somewhere to kick it. And he's got away with one there. Really has. He made a break when he was just looking for a bit of space to kick the ball away. And Montpellier pushed the way upfield now. Give it a Sally to throw. Flag parts the man at the front. Ladder at ease. Hits the line. Beats the first man. Paylog on hand. Quick ball away to Geelong. Feeds one, throws it out to no one. Heron gets it, so Fontaine back up again. Another rumble from the South African. But slow and getting there this time. We're gonna go with something. A little, oh no, we've done, we've taken too long to pick our side there. And Paylog's little grubber kick scores. Oh, Paylog scores! Oh, wow, what a try from Paylog. Benoit Paylog, try of the series. Nothing on, looking for a set piece. People in movement, looking for space, and Paylog just dribbles it through. Ridiculous try, he was slow to the breakdown. We were trying to set up a set piece. Little grubber through. The hooker and the prop were both arguing over who was going to pick it up. Tulanduk comes across, and he's got no chance. It's a try. A try to Paylog. Far out, what happened there? Crazy, crazy rugby from Montpellier to take the lead back. The yellow card period proving to be a bit of a difference maker so far. Seven points from it so far. 21-14 to score. And is there still more in the bank for Montpellier against this Bordeaux side? They need their man back, really, they do. You'd imagine they've got to kick this one deep, but they've got very shallow Hardly even 10 metres. That's a turnover. It's gone. See you later. Wave and goodbye. See the postcard. Bordeaux have got the ball. And they go out to the danger man. Here he is. Cordero. Breaking lines. Oh, Cordero. So far. So elusive. Paylag eventually takes him down. Now they'll hit it up. Numbers on the bus. Through they go. Jones the tackle. He's over. Three men. Couldn't stop him. And Bordeaux hit back again. Cameron Wocky scores. Big number seven. Watch this though. Cordero. Why they haven't gone to him sooner, I do not know for the life of me. But this was hit at pace. Inside Capelli. One, two, three defenders. Oh, was that on the line? I'll leave you to decide that. But the referee has called it a try. And that is a massive one as well. Three defenders on the line. Bothier, Geelong, and then Wynn Jones. None of them could stop the big carry of Walkie. And the try is converted. Bordeaux hit back. It's 21 all. Oh, and the man's back for the bin. I forgot they even lost him. Unbelievable. Substitutes, anyone? Let's have a look, shall we? We're not getting injuries, so we'll make some subs. When Jones off that tackle, they couldn't stop the try, you're off. Sitiano can come on. Geelong's, Geelong's done nothing at number eight, has he? Do we bring... Let's, let's do this. Capelli and, and Geelong can swap. And um, no, no, no. We'll leave Geelong on. We'll bring Capelli off. And that's what I was thinking. Shleiru on at number eight. In the backs, any changes here? Ooh, a Skinner. Skinner to 10. 
Yeah, let's do it. Let's change things up here. Skinner to 10. Paylog off for Pulu. Um, and Padovani. Jeez. Padovani to make or break this game. No. No, 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 no. Injury. We'll leave one player for an injury. Let's get back to the action. Padovani's our saviour. If someone gets broken in these last 15 or so minutes, we'll have someone at least to come onto the field and not have to put a hooker out there, which will Release. be a disaster. Bordeaux grab the ball down. Oh, no, do they? No, they don't. We've nicked it. Paylag, one of Vincent's, looks to shimmy inside. Oh, it's lost. Oh, it's lost so quickly. And they come out wide. Ratiz just gone away. Oh, ankle tap. No, he saves it. Goes back to the left-hand side. Paylag's going to chase here. It's going to be a try. It's Pickamore's away from Paylag. And Pickamore scores. What a try from Bordeaux. Unbelievable! Walker with the bus down the left. Ratiz got him just in time. Watch this chase. Bang! Took Boffier out. And then the foot race, 8v9. You'd think the scrum half would have it, but no. Louis Piccamo's great try for the French legend. And he puts his side back in front. Bordeaux by five. Tranduk, another legend of the game to make it seven. I don't know if we got a way back here. I was hoping to recycle that a bit closer to the 22 and look for a drop goal. But as it turns out, we may not get the chance. We've got five minutes to score a try and we've got a whole host of changes coming on. Setiano makes his way on as does Shaleru. Not to the second row though, to the back of the pack. Heron and Skinner coming off. And Gilda Sally will take over. Paylark for Pulu. Well, maybe Pulu would have chased down Pickamoles. Chiefs, we've got to get that ball back. Here we go. Gilda Sally. He's on the team now. Well, at least the uh, in play kicks. Like Drago chases. Like Drago gets the ball now. Help. Oh, boys, come on. We've got to secure that ball after a kickoff. Citiano takes it down. We just about troubled them there. They are going to run here. They are going to play. And they are dangerous at the moment. Pulu. Don't dog with the run back inside his pick and balls again. So hard to stop. Pulu's offside. Everyone's offside. Serfontaine's offside. Five minutes remain. Don't dog again. Knocks it on. We've got a chance, lads. Oh, no, we don't. We've thrown an intercept ball. And that will give us at least a time to reset. But it is eating up the clock, though. And that is the problem. There's a knock on here. Son took the man in the tackle. Kamada picks it up. Throws Crouch. a intercept Find. ball. Unbelievable. Set. Scrum feed. Pulu on the field. Feeds it in. And that is a very, very good scrum. We're going for some classic plays here, lads. On the inside line. Skinner. Surf and take. Back to Ratiz. It opens up on the Red Sea. Ratiz skips so. He gets up again. Has another play. Time is up. Pulu running. Pulu. Oh no, he's shot into no man's land. Back to Tom Dog. And they'll finish things for no. Oh, what could have been for Pulu? Should have he hung on. Should have he kept it. He tried to draw that gap. Here's the replay. Pulu spotted it. They all converged. He had to give it or should have he hung on. Great play from Malia. And Bordeaux hold on. But Pelia here is costing us in the end. As Bordeaux get one back for the middle table. And they will be well pleased to come away with their big win and the first loss for Montpellier this season. What could have been on the left wing? Carlin Isles. Boy, oh boy, he's having some horrid luck out there in this season so far. Four tries to three. We get a bonus at least for being within seven. No real chance for kicks. No real chances. For drop goals, three tries though. Paylag, Heron, and Ratiz all converted from Heron as well. Boy, oh boy, Pulu, Pulu, Pulu. What could have been there? Great chance for us to hit back and tie it up. Walkie, Pickamoles, Walker, and Juan Cruz, Milia, Hugo Milia, getting one try piece. Don Duke, as you'd expect, perfect off the tee. Well, we've lost one. But you know what we'll put it down to? 
possession. It really does come down to that. If you got the ball, you can play a bit more. If our defense was tighter, yes, 21 points is always more than enough if our defense works. Last episode, our defense was amazing against Toulon. Today, no, non-existent at all. Four tries conceded. That's got to be a massive disappointment, along with 10 handing errors. Poor stuff from Montpellier in round four. Well, i got to say, the honeymoon of La Rochelle seems to be well and truly over. It's Toulon have jumped up and finally got themselves a victory in the bag, taking out what was a surprise package of season number one. What I like about today is that there's no inbox messages. No injuries today. Brilliant. Outstanding. Love it. So we can, well, we could keep an unchanged side or we can mix things up if we want for next episode. All in all, though, still... Another two games, probably about Willemse. Um, at least three without Delmeiru, depending on what Dave fixtures land on. We won't even talk about those last couple. The team, though, I don't know if we're quite getting the standout players that we got last season. Geelong's been pretty average. At number eight, he, he didn't do anything really at all. Maybe should have given more chances off the back of the few scrums we did get. Who's the best scrum half? Paylag, Pulu. Heron's kind of cemented down that 10. But the rest of these, Wingers, Ratiz, obviously, is our number one. But does a guy like Ngundabi now deserve a chance after Isles goes trialless from a couple of games? We've seen Golanitsky be amazing off the bench, and we should probably put him back on there. As a sub, he does make things happen. Starting, not so much. But uh, through the midfield, Sofrentain definitely, you notice, preferred the inside center to the outside. Vincent, again, invisible, much like Ryan Hark was. In his game, so we may change them around for next episode as well. And Bothier versus Padovani. Well, where do you go there? The pack seems pretty solid. Based on what we've got, our best back row, certainly with Diago and Kamada. Number eight, Sanconi probably is the pick there. Geelong needs a little bit more, I think, from him. Francois, good at four. Capelli, solid enough. I'm quite liking those guys there. Uh, Bourguigny at three, tight head. Played all right. Gilda Sally, Wynn Jones. I think the front row, nice little rotations now and then. Wynn Jones, obviously, that international player. We need to keep cycling him through depending on how many others we have in the team. But all in all, pack's okay at the moment. Let's have a look at the table before we wrap up today's episode. Ooh, that hurts. First loss of the season. Leon, now the only undefeated side. Now, remember, if you tune into the stream or, of course, uh, the highlights video, Leon were really good. They didn't beat us. We just snuck by them. But they were really good. Attacking-wise, they were strong. Broke the line. Defensively, average. But they seem to be the team to beat this season. Toulouse is right up there. Two losses, though, which is just remarkable. Bordeaux leapfrogging half a dozen teams up to third. Uh, Claremont is still there. Their one loss was to us in round one. Yes, go you good thing. Custard is up there as well. Three wins and two losses. And, of course, we haven't played our fifth match just yet. You saw we were playing Pal. Down here in 13th, maybe a chance to try something new, something different uh, against these losers at the bottom with just one win from the four games. Minus 41 too. Looking pretty average. Want to pile on the pain there. I want four, five, six tries against those suckers and really to do something special, La Rochelle. They lost their first four games last season, remember? They lost one, two, three, four, and then they won everything for the rest of the year. Looks like they might be doing the same this year as well. Mid-table, Racing, Toulon starting to get going. Van and Stard down there as well. But for us, next episode, pal, at home, I want points. I demand points and I demand lots of tries. I'll see you for it. But until then, thanks for watching as always and take care.